Inside Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us for this segment, we have Rod Griffin, Senior Director of Consumer Education and Advocacy at NASDAQ Listed Experian, to discuss the importance of financial inclusion. Rod, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. Hey Jill, thank you for having me. Glad to be here. All right, you got it. Let's talk about the impact that the COVID pandemic had on Experian in North America. It's been interesting. We actually saw people do better with their credit during the pandemic. Scores increased over time. Uh, and it, I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that people are more aware and more knowledgeable and were in some ways better prepared for the economic implications of, of the virus and, and the shutdown that we saw as compared to say during the uh, the Great Recession, as we call it, when the, the market crashed um, and the housing market crashed you know, 10, 12 years ago. Right. And, I mean, it makes sense. It affected all of us, not just, you know, a certain segment of the population. Um, can you talk to us about Experience Power of You initiative and what it means that everyone can bring their whole self to work? And Experian is very committed to financial inclusion and to helping people in our company and in and, and part of what we do is make sure that people know that they can be who they are and they can bring their, their whole self to work and be respected and contribute to the conversations and, and to the, the uh, work that we do in communities. And it's about helping others understand personal finance and understanding credit and how it works and giving people and our clients the resources they need to make better financial decisions and to improve their financial health overall. It's about knowledge. And you know, we know how th that it's cliche to say knowledge is power, but it's true. If a person has knowledge, they're able to make better decisions. They're able to improve their overall financial life. They're able to access those financial services that break cycles of predatory lending and high cost which makes their lives better and our economy work better. And we know innovation is a key focus for Experian. How is innovation a part of everybody's job at Experian? Everybody at Experian has a responsibility to think about how our work impacts people. It's part of who we are as a culture and thinking about how our products or our services can help people who face barriers to financial inclusion can overcome them. So two years ago, we launched something called Experian Boost, which is proving to be a fantastic tool that it actually empowers people to proactively add positive payment information to their credit report for their cell phones, for their utility bills, for their streaming services, so that they can show, even though they may not have had a very long credit history or haven't had maybe one or two accounts, that there's still a good credit risk, that they still make good financial decisions. And it's the first time that Experian or anyone in our industry has actually empowered individuals to add information proactively to their report that's positive. Uh, I, it, I've been asked countless times, why is it that I've paid my cell phone bill on time every month for the last 10 years and I didn't get any credit for it? But if I don't pay it, it can show up as a collection account. And Experian heard that and took it to heart and are making changes that innovate in the way we help people show that they should have access to better tools and resources. Yep, I remember I remember covering Experian Boost when it launched a couple of years ago and it actually has come up in the course of regular conversation outside of work. Um, and it, I, I love the product. Can you talk about some of the recent innovations at Experian, which includes Experian Boost? Yeah, so we're looking at all kinds of tools and resources. Uh, we have something called Data Labs that's always exploring what kinds of new information can we add to a report that may not have been there traditionally that can show that a person should be a good credit risk. Because you know, people who are doing well financially sort of naturally have a good credit history. They understand how that works. What we're really trying to figure out now is how do we help people who don't have an established credit history establish one, who may not have a traditional credit account, who ha are new to the country or who are young and beginning to build credit for the first time and may not have a student loan, which just for many of us is the way we start a credit history, maybe not the best way, but can happen. Uh, so, you know, how do we help 
that 80% of students who don't go to college and go into the workforce directly? How do they establish a credit history? And so we're looking at how people who are new to credit might learn more about credit, might use tools that are available. We're looking at how do we look at things that are traditionally perhaps seen as predatory, things like payday loans, mm -hmm. for example, or short-term loans. How might someone who's paying a short-term loan on time, if that were reported somehow in a credit report, actually help them break that cycle? How do we turn those things on its ear so that people who are making good decisions, who really should be able to access financial services, are able to? Uh, and that's, again, that's part of something we think about all the time at Experian. Right, well, it's a way to close the inequality gap that we keep talking about. So, Rod, to wrap up here, what do you foresee being the future of Experian? Yeah. Experian is, again, dedicated to helping people have a brighter, better future. And so, in my role, it's a, about education and about knowledge. So, we're very involved and have been for decades with personal finance education. We're a founding member of the Jumpstart Coalition for Financial Literacy. I'll be going to the Jumpstart National Educator Conference that is for teachers of financial education across our country. That experience started in partnership with Jumpstart 12 years ago now. And what we've done in the past really is what we'll be doing in the future. How, learning how to engage with people. How do we provide knowledge and education and couple that with products and resources and tools that empower people to be more financially successful? How do we drive financial inclusion, which is about how do we overcome barriers that particularly low income, marginalized communities face that many of us don't think about? How do we help them overcome those barriers? How do we use technology? How do we use mobile devices? How do we use non-traditional kinds of lending services? So there, there's a universe of untapped resources and tools that experience looking at in terms of information. How do we do that responsibly is always critical. How do we innovate? How do we create opportunity? And I apologize for that. Something All right. Hit well, my wall. <laughs> there you go. Like, Never had that happen. Oh, um, that, that's a world of Zoom we live in now. But that technology is what's helping to bridge oh, the inequality yeah, gap. Technology so. to keep dogs from barking <laughs> when something hits your wall. Uh, so, um, so it's it's you know we're looking at information and how information can empower people and connect people with business. That's what we're really about. You know, I hear from people who say, well, my credit report kept me from getting a service or getting the tools I need. We don't want that to happen. We want people to use their credit report as a financial tool. That's the financial problem. And if we can help them understand how that information works and we can help people connect to business and help business manage risk, which helps people get lower cost financial services and resources, and greater opportunity. We want to be that partner in that relationship. We want to connect people. And I think that's what our future is all about. All right, Rod, we appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malentrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.